So today we're going to be talking about the KLX 140. It's got the big wheel kit on it. Um, I'm going to tell you why this dirt bike sucks from the showroom floor. Now, a lot of people are like, why did you go with the 140? Uh, it's underpowered. It's a kid bike with big wheels, so on and so on. It's hard to find a bike to fit me because I'm really short, believe it or not. Everybody's telling me that riding a dirt bike, you're supposed to be on your tippy toes. Well, the problem that I had was I wasn't even on my tippy toes. I had to lean the bike way over to even get on the bike. Um, I wanted a Honda. That's what I really wanted. The ones I wanted, I went up and looked at. Couldn't even sit on it. Too high. Um, they tried to put me on a smaller one with a big wheel kit. It was super small. It was too, way too small. So we went with the KLX 140, the, bringing this bike home from the showroom floor. When we first brought this bike, it flooded. The carburetor was flooding fuel. Um, it did that twice. I just took the the matters into my own hands and figured out what it was. Honestly, it was the fuel line. It was falling apart inside and putting black stuff in the carburetor and making the float valve stick open and it was flooding the carburetor. If you know anything about these bikes, they are super lean from the factory. You can smell it. Um, super lean the carburetors you can't adjust them they have a welch plug i took the welch plug out it had a bunch of it looked like jb welds so you can't adjust the air fuel mixture with these with these dirt bikes uh, from the factory so the first thing i did was jet this bike because the bike would barely do anything like it was like a, just a putter so we got a cold jet uh kit from tusk we throw that in there and it did great this bike run really really well but you could not fine tune the carburetor uh at top end it would kind of do a little funny stuff and i just needed to tune that air fuel mixture and i can't took the welch plug out it's got putty in it some kind of i'm not going to heat up a carburetor that it probably melts something so i got on the internet got on t-bolt usa i ordered a kit for this bike and this kit is well worth the money everything you need to get this bike running and going Throw this bad boy on, which you'll see here in a minute. Throw this bad boy on, and it felt like I gained so much power. I had to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and roll the footage and show you guys what I did to this bike to make it uh, for an adult. So we're going to go ahead and start taking the plastics off. That's the downfall of this bike. You pretty much have to disassemble every plastic piece in the gas tank to get to the carburetor or to even work on it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is take the throttle slide out and let it hang because we are going to be replacing the throttle cable doing away with it all together so just going to leave it hang I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the choke so we can pop it off when we get the carburetor loose and then we're going to go ahead and take the bolts out of the head for the intake boot These threads feel like they are super long. I don't know why they're that long, but I feel like it takes forever. Let me go ahead and pop the carburetor out of here. I hate this carburetor. It has gave me nothing but problems since I've bought it. Um, so that's why we're just going ahead and thrashing it. You can't adjust it. You can't do nothing with it. So here's the new one. I'll leave all the information in the description below what it is. Um, I got it from T-Bolt as a kit, but all the specs will be in the description below on the carburetor that I have or the carburetors you can source out to make this work and the parts. There's two different ways to do it, buy a kit or make it work. This kit comes with a new intake and it bolts right on and it comes with the bolts and all the hardware which is super nice. So we're just going to go ahead and tighten this thing up. Um, from the factory they have red Loctite on it, so I went ahead and put a little bit of red Loctite on them. Um, keep it from jiggling loose. There's a lot of heat in this area, especially with this new intake. It's not rubber, um, it's aluminum. Like I said, these threads on these bolts feel like they go in forever and ever. <laughs> But so far this kit is fitting actually really well. 
really impressed with it for the price you get. You get everything to get this thing running and out on the trail. The stock carburetor on this thing is okay. It just, it just ain't that good. <laughs> So we went ahead and popped the boot on the carburetor that comes with the kit. Go ahead and squeeze it down in there. This uses the factory air box also. Now this part is a little bit of a pain, it's kind of tight, but once you pop it in the air box, it should slide right down in there. And then it comes with the bolts to tighten it up. Um, these are a little long also, but you just tighten up the boot and tighten up your clamps and your carburetor is installed. Then I'm going to show you guys how to put the throttle slide in the easy way. So we're going to go ahead and take it out. Here is the new throttle cable. So you want to go ahead and run it down through there. And it goes in this little slot right here on top of it. And then you put this little metal keeper in there that holds it in. And the spring pushes down on that so the throttle cable don't come out. I'm going to show you guys how to put a throttle spring on the easy way instead of trying to scrunch it all up and parts flying everywhere. We're just going to thread the spring on just like this. So we're going to take the spring and thread it on the throttle cable. Self-explanatory. It's nothing hard. So we're going to pull it out, take the throttle cable, start the spring on the throttle cable, and just twist it on. And after a while, you'll have it threaded on almost like a bolt but it'll be where it needs to be so just keep spinning it and spinning it as you can see it spins right on at the end it gets kind of hard because it has like that double spring at the end once you clip it through it's right on you don't have to fool around pushing on it and you just stick it back down in there and tighten it up Got it hooked up, now we just gotta go and hook it up on the throttle. And we got it in, put it back together. As you can see, everything fits nice. Um, the throttle works. You can do away with the choke. And as you can see, this fits nicely up around in there. Nice and cool. Let's see if it will fire it up. Let me turn the gas on. Now we're going to go ahead and put this sprocket on. Um, I loosened it up. Got to take the keeper off. We got the new sprocket on. This will make this bike a totally different bike. I know what you're going to say. You just bought a brand new dirt bike and you're already putting money in it. Doesn't make any sense. Like I said, this bike is very lean from the factory. It's for a beginner. It's for the trail. And they want this bike that way. And, you know, according to the government, they don't want you messing with all this stuff on the carburetor. It's lean from the factory and that's how they want it. But if you do this carburetor swap and a sprocket swap, you'll thank me later. It changes this bike. Um, overall, this bike is really nice. One thing I don't like about it is the side plastics, the white pieces where the hand grips are. You pick that up, one of the plastic pieces are going to pop out. Uh, kind of very cheaply made how it snaps in. Uh, it's a $4,000 dirt bike. Um, another thing I don't like is, I don't know if my wheel's out around or what, but with the big wheel on the front and at top speeds, it's kind of wobbly, which I expect that from a small uh, frame with a big wheel on the front, but I'm not doing high speed stuff. I just opened it up when I put the new carburetor on it to see how fast it would go. And uh, it did have a little wobble to it, kind of like a speed wobble. But other than that, I really enjoy this bike. I'm not a big Kawasaki fan. But to get me out there and to play around in the woods, I do have the XR. It's a little too small, but I wanted something a little bit bigger. And uh, to get me out there and play in the woods and, and mess around, this bike will do it. And it's a $4,000 dirt bike. You can flip them easy. I see them all day long getting, trade in, getting traded in. I sold them on Facebook for about three grand. I mean, people take care of them. I'll take care of this one. Uh, so it's a really nice bike. If you just change the carburetor and the sprocket, and you can just do whatever you want to it after that. Um, you can even buy a big bore kit. Honestly, if you put a big bore kit in this thing, I would really be really happy. So basically down the road, I'll probably put a big bore kit in it because this carburetor will work on a big bore kit too because it comes with a bunch of jets. Um, so when you buy this kit, it works with the stock motor and a big bore. So that's one good thing about it. I already have the carburetor for the big bore kit. Had a blast. Even 
with the weather we're having. I can't wait till springtime and summertime. I've had a blast so far on this thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up at that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friends.